Ooh, everyone. So I'm doing in the next few days the VLOG tag. That's a tag by Sean the Book Maniac and Britta Bühler. It's not the original VLOG mass project that's posting one video each day in December, but uh, I'm not doing this directly after NaNoWriMo. <laughs> So I'm doing the vlog mass tag instead and do a video for each letter. Today is the first letter. V is for voyage. A book that involves travel. I'm not doing a book uh, that involves travel, but I do another tag instead. And that's the author's journey my personal voyage into writer Dom Main. <laughs> I'm Joanne Nunchan. I write web fiction. Check it out. This tag is by Carol Brown. Check out her channel as well. I will link um, all the channels of the tagger, of course, in the descriptions below. It's referencing the hero's journey and instead of call to adventure we have call to writing and then we really, um, go through the different topics of my author journey. All right, let's start with call to adventure slash writing. When was the moment you knew you were going to sit down and write your first book? What's the story behind how this happened? I wrote my first book as a NaNoWriMo project. It was in 2006 and I had this story in my mind, not the story per se, but the universe in my mind for a long time. I imagined stories for the sleeping in first, no counting sheeps for me. And I had this story with an alter ego of mine as main protagonist. I usually change stories up um, with uh, an alter ego of mine, like a Mary Sue version of me and uh, an original character. And this was a universe based on a Mary Sue version of me. But I didn't want to be my first story about a Mary Sue, <laughs> my first book about a Mary Sue. So I set the protagonist as a minor character from my Mary Sue world. And she is the protagonist. These stories of mine, these sleeping in stories, they can span over years and this was one of my longest sleeping in story. I think I had it about six or seven years. So I knew the world very, very good. I only had to explore the new main uh, character and uh, the additional cast on characters. So that worked uh, pretty well. It was a sci-fi in the near future where the magic awakens and it plays on my home region. That's uh, Germany, the Palatium region or the Pfalz, like we say. And there are many old myths and these myth awakens like the Elvetritsche. That's uh, chicken inspired demon chicken <laughs> with breasts. Yeah, so they hunt for elvetrichels and uh, walk through the Pfälzerwald, the Palatium Woods and do their shenanigans. And I finished the whole book during uh, NaNoWriMo or most of the book and finished it then a bit uh, later. But the problem was, I wasn't satisfied with this book. I showed it only one friend of mine who 
did a beta reading and a bit of editing for it. Uh, thank you very much, Nathalie. <laughs> it's somewhere on my data stockpile on my computer and that's all right, it can stay there. But I had fun writing it and I always wanted to write another book. Yeah? The biggest difficulty I had was with writing the villain. Because I'm a pretty positive person and I don't understand evilness. Evilness is not rational to me. And villains, I don't understand villains at all. Because I think, hey, why don't we all get along with each other and live happy lives? <laughs> And what do you want with your quest for money or power? It doesn't make sense. What can money and power give you? Yeah, I don't, I didn't understand it and I don't understand it still. So uh, my will was very cardboard. Oh, not only cardboard, it was a comical will. More will against his own will and he just messed up a bit and this messing up had big consequences. So that are the kind of villains I'm halfway able to write. Yeah, because I know I can mess up, I did mess up and I know all about messing up. So I can write messing up villains who got into villainy against their will because they messed up. So I realized that I needed more life experience, that I needed more exposure to villainy, to people, to bad people, to the ups and downs of life, especially the downs, because I had a very sheltered life and so I needed more exposure to the real world. So I didn't write a book for 10 years or even another story. I wrote a few short stories before and concentrated on getting more life experience. Then I felt I was at a point that I was in my mid 30s and yeah, you know how life goes, something happened, some things went well, some things didn't went well, and I thought, oh, okay, let's try it again. On another NaNoWriMo. Yeah, and um, I enjoyed the story, but I thought, oh, the main character is too professional. I didn't dislike the main character, it just didn't had as much depth to its character concept than I would liked. So I stopped writing the story after NaNoWriMo and um, showed it another few of my friends and uh, they liked the supporting characters and liked um, the comedical elements and I thought, yeah, yeah. I need more life experience. <laughs> I still needed more life experience because there was no villain at all in this story. Okay, so I waited another few years. I wanted to write based on this story, on my second NaNoWriMo, it was a Lit RPG. Lit RPG stands for Literature and Roleplay Gaming and um, it's a whole genre. Uh, you probably know Ready Player One, that's the most famous book of this genre. I thought, okay, I want uh, to write another book. No, it wasn't I want to write another book, it was more like I want to change something with my life. My life wasn't going well, I was increasingly more ill with colds that didn't run away, I, my weight increased and I did not much uh, sport and I smoked too much 
too many secrets. So I had a very unhealthy lifestyle. And um, part of it was due to my job because I had to uh, travel long distances around four hours a day just traveling traveling by train and yeah and i reduced the uh, workload of my job and i reduced the days i do my job i did uh, four day a week and i thought all oh, right on the fifth days i can write my book now we are at the second part of the author's journey refusal to the call yeah what stopped you from writing in the first place yeah it was my uh, job that stopped me especially the long commuting hours i need my whole focus on a project at least for some time to get into it because then my whole being is consumed by this new project and I just couldn't manage to do my regular job to my satisfaction and to get into writing even with the whole Friday uh, Friday was my day off just reserved for health and writing so I struggled with it and tried to do mainly things for my health on that on this friday because yeah if i'm ill i can't <laughs> i can't write as well uh, but it didn't it didn't work yeah so we can we are coming to the next step crossing the threshold the moment when you took the plunge and first started so I decided this year um, enough is enough. It wasn't an easy decision. I got counseling and went over it with my family, with my counselor, with my friends. And it was a process at least one year long where I still wanted to work and I wanted to make it happen with still working but i just did it just didn't work out yeah so i decided okay i will take off a whole year from my regular work and concentrate just on my health and on creative projects like doing youtube especially for accountability and for doing the writing I had a few projects in mind. One was a different take on the Lit RPG story. Instead of a professional disabled gamer, I decided for a total newbie granny to go in the Lit RPG world. So I had more reasons to explain gaming to my audience and to let them discover the critical points of gaming together with my MC. Because one of my major pet peeves with Lit RPG is that the protagonist is a professional gamer. Yes, he's the best gamer on the whole planet. And the author tells us that he is the best gamer or one of the best gamers, but I don't believe it because I played MMOs on a very, let's skip the very, let's say on a high level, yeah, with um, participating in server firsts and being in a guild who did several server firsts. So I knew gamers, not professional gamers, but high level amateur gamers and i knew the different mindsets they had to succeed and i saw nothing of this on the protagonists and they got their advantages through ridiculous things 
which I thought mm, everybody can do this and with the rules you explained in the universe there ought to be people who are much better at gaming than the protagonists or they get Deus Ex Machina things oh here you stumbled upon this magical tree and now you uh, are the best gamer in the world or you re and you know everything about how the game will go in the next few years and I don't want to be um, my story like this I want to show this is a mindset one possible mindset how you can be a very successful MMO gamer different of these possible mindsets in not only the MC but in the supporting cast as well. So this was one of my agendas and another agenda was to make it funny because oh, when I have a year off I want to enjoy myself and uh, I'm uh, this kind of person who laughs about her own jokes so perfect. I took the plunge and started my year officially at 1st of September. But my former employer uh, said, oh, do what you want in August as well. <laughs> so, but officially it's 1st of September. So I uploaded uh, the story um, end of June Oh, I'm a web fiction author, so everything I write, I do upload on Royal Roads, Web Novel, Scribble Hub, and Wattpad. Check out my story, it's in the description below. It's called Auntie Toast the VR MMORPG. So I wrote this story and I'm still writing it. And I posted on these platforms. Testing Trials Alleys. What did you learn during the drafting process? Did you encounter any difficulties? Was there anyone there to help you during this time? As web novel author, I don't have the standard drafting process. I do the drafting, I do the writing, I do the editing, and I do the uploading for every chapter. Yeah, so trials. My story got popular really, really fast. Much more faster than I ever dreamed to expect. Yeah, it was end of September, where, or maybe mid of September, where my subscribers tripled or uh, rose by 10 times or I can't say how much so I had in the early stages 10 subscriber per chapter 20 subscribers per chapter yeah and then it exploded and suddenly I had 600 subscribers at the beginning of October yeah and I was totally flashed but then the subscriber count stagnated. It's still stagnating two months later. I still have around 600 subscribers on Royal Road. It's only um, the explosion and stagnation only happened on Royal Road. On the other platforms, it's uh, a reasonable curve yeah. <laughs> so I think that's good because I still had the other platforms to say yeah they're still growing they're growing nice and slowly everything is all right but these uh, two months now over two months where it stagnates on Royal Road this is hard for me to accept I question myself do I need more plot yes I didn't I do need more plot if I want to write a regular book, but I'm writing more a slice of life kind of story, so it has nearly no plot at all. 
And that's just the kind of the story, but I question it. Is plot something people really need? Yeah? Hmm. I don't know. I still don't know. I included a bit more plot, but plot will never be the main focus of the story. But it's a major trial for me to accept that my story isn't one for the masses. But I kind of know this before as well, because I'm not a person for the masses. Yeah, But the persons who do like me, like me a lot, and I've got the same impression with my novel as well. The people who do like my novel, they like it a lot and they like my MC a lot. Yeah, maybe I just have to accept this on a deeper level. I do accept it on a surface level, but I have to more internalize it. And I mean, it's not a bad thing, because the book market is oversaturated, the lit RPG market is crazy as well. If you want to read a uh, bad lit RPG, you can read it every day of your life, uh, several hours a day, and you won't finish the genre ever. Yeah. So going for a niche in that niche is maybe all right. Maybe that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Maybe it's not. Maybe it is. That is my trial. Yeah. Alice. Yeah, I have conceptualized some Alice, not only actual persons, but methods to help me reach my goal to write my story and have a successful year, a successful creative year. One of my Alice is YouTube, because YouTube gives me the accountability. I do weekly vlog on Wednesday where I talk about the last week and what I plan the next week and this gives me the kind of accountability I need for being self-employed and staying on track. Then um, I do another YouTube or whatever on Sundays. So I have these uh, be weekly YouTube times and I really think uh, it helped me a lot. Yeah. Another alley was my shrink. I started a therapy for helping me through this year and to keep me on track. Uh, behavioral therapy. I don't know if this is the right word in English. To help me reach my goals. Another form of accountability and to, to uh, diminish some of my weaknesses. Some of the weaknesses I have as a human being like procrastination. I love to procrastinate, especially things I don't like, like the administrative stuff. It's not the usual level on procrastination. You might know from yourself if you are a well-adjusted person, but my level of procrastination is on the not healthy side of things. You can perhaps compare it with I'm afraid of spiders, yeah? Some, most people dislike uh, spiders and think they're kind of disgusting, yeah? And they are. <laughs> and so if I say procrastination, most people think, oh yeah, I know procrastination. Like procrastination and oh, spiders are disgusting little creepy things. Uh, but then there are some people who are really, really afraid of spiders. They can't enter a room where a spider is in and they run away screaming. And that's my level of procrastination. Yeah, The running away screaming <laughs> from tasks I don't like. 
I think I'm pretty well adjusted and I'm not young anymore. So I have my tricks yeah, that I hire people for the worst parts I dislike and I love to procrastinate. I have tricks to convince myself to do things I procrastinate. But when I'm feeling ill and my immune system is down, then I don't have the strength to do these tricks. So I need help. Yes, but my shrink fired me this week. I mean, poo. <laughs> yeah, I won't go into why he fired me, but he did fire me. So one of my allies left me. That's not good. That's not good. Uh, then, of course, my family is an ally of mine as well. Uh, but they said, um, yeah, we just let you do this year and uh, enjoy it. And we won't get bothered by it. They won't read my story either. Because they said that their English isn't well enough. Yeah? And that's bothering me. I mean, I would like for to share my story with my family. And my brother, his English is good enough, but he has small children, so he has no time. But they support me emotionally, and that's worth a lot. Yeah. I mean, I'm complaining on a very high level. Yeah. They do support me. But they are all special people, and that's no wonder, because <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm the offspring of a family with very many very special people, <laughs> and this is great most of the time, and some of the time it's not that great. Uh, take my mother for example. She said, "Okay, I watch your YouTube videos. It doesn't matter that I understand nothing." I still watch it just to see your face. Yeah, how cute is this? It's very sweet and I really appreciate it. So I told her, ah, yes, uh, the like button. It's good when you like my videos because of YouTube algorithms. And she said, oh no, I only give likes to the videos I very much like because that's her kind of threshold and she wants that her power of like has power and the power doesn't diminish with overuse. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's, uh, that's typical for my family. So they support me, that's great, but they have all their own special little gimmicks and eccentricities. Let's leave it like this. Then uh, another allies of mine are my friends. Their English is um, good, yeah, but they all have their own lives, and I can't expect from them to uh, beta read for me or uh, to help me with editing. Therefore, I only send them special chapters. I need feedback. And that's very nice of them that they read them and give me feedback. Great. Thank you very much, friends. Another unexpected Ali appeared on the beginning of my journey. I want to make money with my story, yeah? And with the year, with my off year. The usual way to make money as a free web fiction author is Patreon or Coffee or Paypal, yeah, but Patreon is the most common tool to make money. Check out my Patreon, you get advanced chapters there. So suddenly one Patreon appeared and of course I was ecstatic that I had my first paying customer, uh, but it was an old colleague and friend of mine, Huhu Dennis, yeah? And he just thought, oh yeah, 
let's support my old Paul, try a ninja hen and give her some money. I really think that was sweet beyond imagination. No, beyond. Hmm. Beyond my imagination. So really, really cute that he started my career as a paid author by himself. In the meantime, I've got a few more patrons. Let's call them real patrons, not allies that want to support me, but people who really want to read one chapter or three chapter or five chapters more of my story and can't wait for me to release them for free, but want the advanced chapters. Yeah, so that's uh, great and I hope I will get many more patrons <laughs> and make real money uh, with this project. The ordeal. The biggest obstacle to completing your book. I'm one of these people who think you yourself are your biggest enemy and you yourself are your biggest ally. And one of my biggest trials and testings, or maybe even ordeal, is to stay on track and not to get swept away by the day-to-day -day workings, to stay on schedule, to do my work regularly, write every day, and not to be afraid of my light. Yeah, being afraid of one's light. I dread success maybe more than failure. I know if I fail, yeah, what is the worst that can happen? I mean, I go back to my old job. If this doesn't work, okay, then there can be worse things, but my old job is pretty secure. I think my old job is pretty secure, so I think I always have the option to go back to my old job. I'm a software developer and software consultant specialized on SAP software. That's a pretty sought after job. So, not a job is so thought after, the, the experts are thought after. So, I believe it's realistic that I can go back to my old job without any problem in the next year. After a year, technology moves, but SAP technology moves a bit slower than the rest of the world, especially if you are um, a consultant because you um, have to, a developing, a software developing consultant, because you have to work with the software that is productive in the companies and they don't change their whole software system when a new thing comes out or comes up. Yeah, but what if I'm successful? Not mega, 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 mega successful, but so a bit successful. Let's say I made, I make half of what I did as a um, software consultant. Do I continue this project? Do I go back? What if I make a quarter of what I do as software consultant? What if it's only one tenth, but the statistics are looking good? The statistics are looking like it's going not like at the moment with my stagnating uh, subscriber count. But what if I think, okay, hmm, if I would do this one more year, maybe then I would be successful. But then two years of software developing experience are missing and getting back in my old shop would be much more complicated. Yeah, so I'm more um, afraid of succeeding than of failing. <laughs> so we'll see how this audio um, plays out. Next, the resurrection. 
even with all of the challenges, what was the key thing that made it possible for you to keep plugging away and finish your book, baby? Yeah, I think we can stop uh, my author's journey here because I am still at the testing trials and alleys and uh, the ordeal part maybe. I'm not in the deep trenches of the ordeal yet because up to now everything worked pretty well. I um, won NaNoWriMo, I uploaded my chapters regularly, I didn't miss even one day or one chapter, I even did a bonus chapter, I published all of my YouTube videos in scheduled times, so yeah, everything is looking quite okay, yeah. So I do a part two when, maybe when I finish the first volume of my story, this will be maybe in January, uh, or maybe when my year off is over. And um, we'll see if there is another call to writing or if it's back to my old job. So I thank you very much for listening to me rambling this whole time. Uh, this video is too long already. And I hope you check out my web novel. Thank you to Carol Brown for inventing this tech author's journey. Bye-bye.